Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a DIY and it is of these little tiny corgi charms. I have them in my hand. I don't have the finest on them yet because I've run out, but I will get to that. Anyway, so today's video is on how I made these. I love them. They are so cute. I made these due to the fact that it is the Queen's Platinum Jubilee next week. And I thought what better than to get into the spirit of the occasion than to make these little cuties. These will be on my Etsy store um, when I have a next shop update. So stay tuned for that. But I just, I adore them. I've got a couple that are like standing up. I've got a couple that are lying down and I'm gonna show you how I made these today. These have also been requested on my channel quite a bit ever since I did that keychain. Do you remember? I did a felt keychain with the same design. I usually suck at dog design, but I did this keychain. I love it. It's probably, I don't know, one, maybe two, three years ago now. It's made out of felt. I'll leave that tutorial also down in the description because you have to check that out. But yeah, ever since I made that, some people have been requesting for me to do it in charm version. I haven't got around to it, but I have now and I am in love with them. I love them so, so much. So yeah, these are going to be on my Etsy shop when that shop update comes around. For now, I'm just going to start the tutorial on how to make these little Corgi Polly McClay charms. So as I said, these clay charms are made from polymer clay, so you're going to need some of that to begin with. I used a ball kind of around about an inch in size, as you can see here, and then I just rolled it out in the middle to kind of make it into like almost like a little bean shape, basically. So it had a little indent in the kind of centre for the corgi's back, and then it had a little kind of butt bit and a little head bit. So basically just making an indent all the way around in the centre. As you can see here, I'm just pressing it out with my fingers and thumbs just to kind of really... um exaggerate those little corgi curves once i was happy with that i then took my finger and my thumb and i started pinching together where i wanted the little feet to be usually i would add these on as separate pieces and blend them out but i thought this would be the easiest way considering the corgi's legs were quite small so once i had pinched them out i was left with a little shape like so and i actually used my cricut tool just to kind of like press in and just like smooth out all the little sections between the legs so it ended up being a nice smooth kind of finish once i I was happy with that I just went back in with my finger again just to make sure that all those legs were kind of nice and leg shaped by themselves just really kind of going in and defining out the little leg pieces to make the ears on the corgi's head I just took two small balls of polymer clay and popped them on top I used my finger and my thumb just to kind of pinch those together to make them into a triangle and just use my finger to kind of make them into an ear shape I then used the cricket tool again just to blend that down into the corgi's kind of head just just to make sure that they were all fully secure and kind of like blended on there you could also use liquid clay to reinforce this use wire in there if you wanted to i thought that these would be all right as they are just because i know i go ahead and use a lot of resin afterwards to um like glaze these pieces and that kind of reinforces these as well I then took another small, well, even smaller ball of polymer clay and just rolled it out slightly into a snake-like sausage shape and popped that onto the corgi's butt to make the tail. I used my Cricut tool once again just to blend that upwards so that the top part of the tail had bled in with the body i then decided to remove any of the fingerprint marks any of the glove marks any little pieces of dust for example with an alcohol wipe this is something i like to do with my charms and i just kind of smoothed out all of the surface um just with that little tiny alcohol wipe on the clay piece i do find alcohol wipes to be quite handy when making charms because i can use one per charm or you can buy rub and alcohol and put that onto a little piece of fabric for the last step before baking, I just inserted an eye pin in between the two kind of ears, nice and secure in there. Then I placed this into a baking tray with the other shapes available that I had made previously. And I just baked them in the oven at 110 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. To make the ones with the little lying down legs, I basically just made it in the same way and just like folded them outwards so that the legs went forward and back. <laughs> Once the clay pieces were out of the oven, I then just popped them down onto a tile and I ended up using some blue tech to secure these down and I just painted them with acrylic paint. As you can see, this tile is very much well used. I use it all the time. I have so many of these and it really does hold your piece secure when you're painting and you're able to, you know, paint the backs of them like so without getting completely covered in paint i still got completely covered in paint but this really does help out next up with the details i went with a teeny tiny little paintbrush and started painting these on it doesn't look that small but I promise you it is it's tiny anyway i painted these on with white acrylic i just went down the center of the face 
like rounded that off around to where like the corgis underneath its eyes would be and painted all that in white i then painted the chest of the corgi in white and painted the sides as well and i painted the little butt area whilst it was still attached to this blue tack once i had these pieces done i then like stuck it down onto the blue tack so that the bellies were facing upwards and then i painted the bellies white as well joining up all of the previous white kind of details that i put on before I then took a very pale light pink once I was done with that and painted the inside of the ears. I used a dotting tool and some black acrylic paint to just paint on the eyes where I wanted those to be. And then I painted on a tiny nose and a tiny, tiny, tiny mouth. This took loads of concentration and a tiny, tiny tongue to go with that. Once that was done, I then moved on and I actually decided to put some little hearts where the paws would be. I thought of doing little paw prints and then I thought hearts would be even cuter. So I put little hearts there <laughs> so cute i did this on the corgis that were lying down as well i just did that on like the bits that were kind of you know pointing outwards where the paws well, where i thought the paws would be and i thought this turned out to be the cutest touch ever this made me so happy inside i don't know i just i just thought it was so cute in order to glaze the pieces i actually used this exact uv resin here this one here i cured it down with a uv nail lamp i will leave it all of this down in the description so i just basically paint it on i mix a little bit of glitter in as well because i like a little bit of a glitter effect and i just paint that on and cure it down with my uv lamp which is a uv nail lamp again i'll leave that down in the description as you can see here this is what the little corgis turned out like once they had been glazed super duper shiny as you can see here loads of glitter on there i think it gives such a nice glittery finish and such a nice like extra little touch to them and i'm so so happy that i did that on these pieces as well Okay, so this one here is the one that's lying down. Look at him. Look at his little legs poking out. He's got little hearts on the front of his paws there. And then he's also got them on the back as well. Let me just show you that. Look at them. Ah, are they so cute? I love them so, so much. I just love these guys. Like, look at their little faces. Oh, aren't they so adorable? They've got little tongues poking out and everything. I've also got the ones that are standing up. Let me show you those. Hold on. Look at these. So exactly the same face, exactly the same facial expression with the little tongue on. But obviously he's just stood up. So his shape is like that. Got the tail at the back there with his little butt. And yeah, there's little hearts on the bottom. I just absolutely adore these. So yeah, these are going to have the little class one that my charms usually have. I'm just waiting for them to arrive. Just going to use um, a double split ring and then a little kind of lobster class on top. And they will be complete. But I just wanted to get this tutorial out right now for you. Just in case you want to be making some Jubilee inspired charms. Or just some little corgis in general so yeah thank you so much for joining me on today's video hopefully i will be back next friday for another jubilee inspired diy um fingers crossed it all goes to plan i'm sure it will i'm working on it now and it's just going so cute but i need a lot of extra days on this one so yeah i hope you have a fantastic week and i will see you very soon for another video bye